Johnson here. Mabry here. Gomez here. Newman here. Okay, but uh, please stand and let's uh, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is for all. Thank you. 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 Sean, go ahead. Um, uh, thanks for having me, first of all. Uh, my name is Sean Harden. I'm the general manager for Peel Motors in Princeton. Uh, Peel Motors has been in business for 16 years in Princeton. Um, Greg and Bob Peel bought the dealership from the Faber family, who had owned the dealership since 1968. Uh, between the Faber family and Peel, the business has been generating tax dollars and employing local families for the city of Princeton for 52 years. Um, you know, we currently sell Chevy, Buick, and GMC cars, trucks, and SUVs. Peels currently employs 57 full and part-time employees with an annual payroll of about $1.5 million and an annual real estate tax of approximately $76,000 a year. Um, I just wanted to Thank everybody in this time of uncertainty for continuing to support local business and just let you know some of the things we're doing to help keep our customers safe. Um, we built plexiglass partitions for all the sales, service, parts, and body shop desks to help practice social distancing while utilizing materials from all the local businesses um, that we could get the materials from. Um, we've had parts, service, sales and body shop all sanitized with cloggers and continue to clean all touch points. <clears throat> we are offering at home pickup and delivery for oil changes and all other service appointments with pay over the phone for convenience. Um, we also offer at home test drives and even do paperwork for customers um, at their house if it helps them feel more comfortable. I just want to, to thank everybody for, for letting me speak and urge everyone to continue to uh, shop local businesses and continue to support local businesses in any way that they can. Um, I think it's important that we continue um, to keep our tax dollars local and shop local. So thank you very much. Well, thanks, Sean, for, for coming on. I know it's, uh, it's awfully tough, uh, you know, out there in your business as well. I know that, uh, are you... Uh, you guys, uh, as far as selling cars, are you doing that by uh, appointment only? Is that how you're handling? Yeah, yeah by by appointment only. Yeah. Uh, for, yeah well. for car sales, I mean, service you can come up. You know, you can, um, you know, just stop in. But as far as car sales, appointment only. Okay, oil changes and all that. As far as just driving in. Yeah, you can still use the quick loop service, um, and if you have an emergency, still. So you know, come in if you don't have an appointment for other uh, services, but as far as sales, uh, by appointment only. Okay. Well, it's, it's been pretty, it's been pretty good so far. I mean, it's, it, uh, um, you know, we've still been doing a, a good business, which is great to see. Yeah, that's, that's good to hear. I know it's, again, it's, I know it's uh, how tough it is out there. And, uh, really appreciate you coming in and, uh, and, and speaking and uh, glad to hear things are moving, moving well for you out there. Yes, I appreciate it. Thank you. We agree with you, uh, everybody. You know, the shop Princeton and uh, continue to shop Princeton first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's important for small towns to, uh, especially small towns, to to utilize that and utilize, um, you know, everybody staying, you know, staying local as much as they can. Well, again, thanks. Thanks for coming on. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank yep, you. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Yep, thank you. Do we have uh, anyone else who would like to uh, take this time during public comment? Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so we are, uh, at this point, we are going to go ahead and uh, open a public hearing for uh, the comments on the application for the Downstate Small Business Sustainability Program. And I'm going to turn it over to uh, Teresa, a city manager at this time, and she'll take it from here. Okay, um, as I mentioned at the last meeting, the City of Princeton is partnering with the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity for the Downstate Small Business Stabilization Grant Program, which makes um, grant funding available to certain COVID-19 pandemic impacted businesses that employ between one and 58 people. The grant program provides up to 25,000 to the community businesses located within the city of Princeton that have been economically impacted by the pandemic. The purpose of the grant is to help businesses make up to 60 days of employee and operating costs. Businesses eligible to apply must be private, for-profit small businesses that are considered non-essential by the governor's executive order and must have had the same owners since January 1st of 2017. Because of the nature of the funds uh, being that they're grant money, the city of Princeton is required to coordinate the request of these funds on behalf of the businesses located within the city limits who submit completed application material. Okay. We, at this point, we have received five applications, um, so I'll call this is potentially be the first round of these applications. And the proposed award amounts of the applications were um, locally published as required by the grant application. Um, the hearing today is to uh, accept any public comment regarding the program or the applications specifically. Uh, the five applications that we received include uh, 4 and 20 Cafe, Guys and Gal Salon, Bruce Jewelers, Jillian's, and Spoon's Restaurant and Bar. So each of those applications have submitted for 25, up to the cap, which is $25,000 of operating expenses. And each of their application packets have been available online because of the COVID uh, situation. Um, if somebody wanted to make an appointment, they could uh, was also publish that they could come into City Hall uh, to make an appointment and look at the application. So I guess at this point, uh, we need to ask if there's any public comment on these applications. Anybody want to make public comment? I don't have any technical comments at this time. Okay, so uh, lack of public comment, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing on the application for the Downstate Small Business Sustainability Program. We'll uh, go ahead and move on to the approval of minutes. We'll go to Commissioner Newman. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, I will do we approve the minutes from our regular council meeting on May 4th, 2020. Second. Motion's been second. Any uh, comments? Council Member Swanson? Aye. Avery? Aye. Gomez? Aye. Newman? Aye. Mayor Quirum? Aye. Now we'll go to the approval of invoices uh, and city clerk also. Okay, uh, for this period we have in the Department of Accounts and Finances we uh, to, uh, invoices totaling $59,876.06. In the Department of Streets and Public Improvements, we have invoices totaling $78,793.90. In the Department of Public Safety, we have invoices totaling $291,434.51. And in the Department of Public Property and Utilities, we have invoices totaling $602,325.99. Mayor, all council members present have confirmed their reviews of all invoices and now are submitted for disposition. I move that we approve the invoices as presented. Second. Motions for second. Any comments? Okay, call roll. Council member Swanson? Aye. Mabry? 
Aye. Gomez. Aye. Newman. Aye. Mayor Clearham. Aye. And now we'll go to our regular business and City Court Nelson. Okay, next on the agenda is the first reading of Ordinance O-20-006. This is uh, amending city code to set standards for solar energy collection. Mayor, all council members have reviewed this ordinance and it is submitted for disposition. I move that we advance ordinance 0-20-006 to the second reading. Second. Motion to second. Comments? Pete might want to take off, take start this off. Okay, so this ordinance is uh, a, a culmination of um, detail that came from the plan commission months ago. Uh, and then uh, we began to get um, inquiries about uh, citizens in the area that are uh, in the process of um, purchasing and or erecting solar arrays on their houses. And so we realized that we had to kind of skedaddle to get um, up to speed on uh, what's required to safely put a um, an array on a house and how, how much the city should be involved in it. We got, uh, during our research period, we discovered that our, uh, our, our own liability carrier uh, had suggested that we have the owners of the solar arrays um, make sure that they get a uh, liability policy for a million dollars that names the city of Princeton as additionally insured. And at first, the people who were putting these arrays on their houses or have a project in mind uh, accepted that. But when they uh, checked with their insurers, uh, they found that uh, their insurer would not write a policy uh, to um, a million dollar policy to uh, have the city included as additionally insured. So we began to realize that this is not an ind industry standard as we were once um, uh, suspecting it was. Uh, so we kind of went back to the drawing board to do a little bit more research on how these are being handled in the industry. What we discovered was that there's a lot of inconsistency in the industry, at least at this point. Um, I would tend to think it'd be fairly mature with uh, um, a lot of the solar uh, uh, applications that have taken place in sunny states like California and Arizona, but uh, we weren't able to really discern what was appropriate and what was common for the municipalities to uh, require of the owners. And not, not everybody is a public uh, utility either, so some of it was, was not applicable. Um, so we, we thought that we, we may have to, at least for the short term, uh, not require the million dollar policy showing the city is additionally insured. Um, and we've kind of spread that or, or communicated that to uh, three or four of the projects that are currently pending in Princeton and, and hoping to get off the ground here as soon as the city decides what it wants to do. I have since learned uh, over the last week that uh, there are policies out there where um, or homeowners have uh, inquired and found that they could get a million dollar increase or get their homeowner's liability increased to a million dollars as long as the city wasn't named as additionally insured on the policy. And some of those uh, premiums are relatively modest. Um, so with that being the case, we thought that we would put it in front of the council and see to what extent the council is comfortable either uh, foregoing the million dollar uh, liability policy on the part of the owner of the system or uh, demand some sort of uh, liability coverage threshold, whether it be a million dollars or less, um, and, and just kind of have a discussion on how the council feels about how our system should be protected. Now, I will tell you, uh, just to, to close up here a little bit, 
is that the Jeff Mangrich, our electric superintendent, has said that there can be some danger in the event that uh, one of these solar systems that are installed privately on a uh, residential use, uh, if the um, uh, quick release uh, or the rapid shutdown switch fails, there could be voltage that trickles back into the city grid, which could uh, cause outages, uh, fires, or uh, other damage. And if one of our guys was actually working on the line at the time in the neighborhood, he, he could potentially be killed. Uh, so we, we're thinking that we really need to look closely at this. And, and maybe you don't decide tonight uh, if, you ha if there should be a liability limit, but certainly it's something that we need to do before the second reading on, on June 1st. So with that kind of background, I guess I'll open it up and see if anybody has any other comments. This, uh, this ordinance doesn't apply to the, uh, uh, to the uh, liability coverage. This is essentially for uh, uh, uses and structures, loads and so on, as far as putting on the roof of, the, of a home or a building. So this doesn't necessarily address the uh, liability issue, is that right? Yeah, that's correct, because I, I really didn't know what to include. I, I thought that the, that the, the council could uh, set a course for uh, what limits of liability should be used um, before we actually include it in the, in the ordinance. So if you decide on something tonight or decide that we would do some research between now and June 1st and, and decide on a liability limit, we could have that uh, – in, in text form for the second reading. The other, the other thing that I, that I guess is an important point that I, I didn't mention yet is that in talking to our liability carrier, which is called Tokyo Marine, that's through uh, Diamond Brothers, um, we have a $5,000 deductible on our liability coverage, but if, a, if, if we should suffer damage uh, and the, the homeowner doesn't have enough insurance, at least at the onset, our our liability policy would cover the damage less the $5,000 deductible, and then they would subrogate against the owner. Pete, now you mentioned earlier that uh, you discovered that it's possible for a homeowner to have his homeowner insurance company provide like a million dollar rider on his homeowner insurance policy, but that that policy can't include the city as a insure, as a secondary insurer, is that correct? Correct. Now, what if we ask the owner to do that and then sign a document between the city and them that should damage occur, that he could file a claim through his homeowner insurance company? Is that even feasible? Um... So you're, you're saying if the owner damages our system, or are you saying if we owner, if we damage the owner's system? No, I'm sorry. If the owner's system damages our grid, and he has, in fact, uh, uh, added that million-dollar liability coverage to his own homeowner's policy, could we, upon installation of the system, require that new systems, that an agreement be signed between the homeowner and the city that should damage occur, that he can, he would tap into that policy to reimburse us for whatever damage the system caused us. We can file a claim, but that doesn't necessarily mean the insurance company is going to, you know, honor it. They may, you know, there may be um, circumstances that the uh, insurance company would deny the claim. I mean, um, they, could, they could submit the claim, but that's not a guarantee that they're going to pay anything. That's a logical question, Jerry, and frankly, I, I think we'd probably have to get a yeah. legal opinion on that. Yeah. I, I think you may get an indemnity from the homeowner, but uh, again, collectability is a question, uh, but you could have the homeowner find something guaranteeing to make the city whole. Whether they could or not would remain to be seen. Yeah. Oh, the you know, homeowner's going to want protection on this. They're going to want insurance, because whether, whether they have insurance or not, if they damage the uh, city grid or, or, or cause an injury or something like that, they're going to be liable, or they could be liable. It, you know, whether they have insurance or not won't make a difference. Well, uh, yes. You know, it's with, with, all the, with all 
the solo events out west, I'm, I, I guess it's just, I'm just amazed that there isn't some insurance coverage for that. I mean, it's everywhere out in Arizona, I know for a fact. And uh, well, I think municipalities are trying to protect themselves as well with some kind of insurance. Are, are the uh, ones out west all publicly owned? Privately owned, Hector. I'm, I'm sitting on people's uh, roofs. And they're, you know, doing exactly what we're proposing here in Illinois. But I don't know what relationship or what legal obligation they have to the municipality in Phoenix or something as an example, should they do that. Um, is there, like, anywhere, like, in one of those towns where you basically can go into the, uh, the city where there might be something explaining an ordinance, something that is related to the solar power that they have out there? Would, yes, I would think that some research could be done to see what the city of Phoenix or the or Los Angeles or some of those western counties that have solar out there, abundant solar out there, uh, could we, provide we, some insight. Uh, I'll just say that we've we've tried to get our insurance company to do that legwork for us, um, <laughs> and they, yeah. they they actually have tried to do the, the do the legwork. Uh, they haven't come up with anything um, substantial yet, so. You know, poss maybe we could do our own research um, on the city websites out west or something and see what we can find out. Uh, good. We have to remember, too, we're kind of unique in that we have our own power company, whereas if you're dealing with Ameren or Silco or something like that, they're a you know, private business in a different situation, I would think. You're right. You know, the bottom line is we need, uh, you know, we need to protect the uh, rate players and uh, the rate payers against uh, any damage to the grid from a solar panel uh, operation on home. Just, uh, uh, you know, we, we just need to, we need to follow through on that because we can't, we can't leave it open. Well, well and I would, I would assume that if outfits somehow, some way, our grid were to damage the homeowner's solar array, that the homeowner would demand that we compensate them fully for whatever damage is caused by the city, I would think the reverse should apply as well. Yeah. yeah. I would think our insurance coverage would handle that case, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. But I would just hate to see us out there hanging out there with that much, you know, with no coverage per se, no protection. Um, can I just say real quick, uh, Pete, I got a couple quick questions. This is Council Member Mabry. So, Pete, now, I'm sure you guys have already uh, resourced the IMEA, correct? You talked to them. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Manger should, yeah. Okay. And then give us a scope of, I know there's for sure two homeowners that actually have their solar panels on their houses. How many How many people are we dealing with right now is that either have them on their house trying to get finished with the project or have applied? I mean, talking four, six people, ten people? Roughly in numbers? Four. Four. Okay. Okay, well, I, you know, I just don't think we have enough information to act on this tonight. If you, if we pass the ordinance, and part of it, the idea for the first reading with the idea that we're going to revisit this uh, for the next meeting and try to tighten down our, our, uh, our liability issue for the city side, I think that would be something we'd start tonight, Mayor. And the other thing, Mayor, maybe there's somebody that's uh, called in tonight that maybe is one of these four people that might uh, like to talk to during this time, if possible. Yeah, yeah, I, believe that, I, I believe that's correct. Uh, I don't know if you want to do that now or if you want to uh, wait for the public comment at the end of the agenda, but if you want to open it now, that's up to you. Yeah, why don't we go ahead and open it now? That way we can address any concerns. But, uh, yeah, so whoever's out there, uh, just be free to state your name and then uh, go ahead and shake off. Yeah, I think Ellen Starr is out there. Ellen, are you, are you uh, audio audible here? I am. Well, I'm like here, yes. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to talk. Um, as I see it as a homeowner in the mix of all this, the issue is um, having that extra insurance um, being, um, you know, the city of Princeton as the insured. That was the issue with my insurance company, and I think I speak for most of the homeowners. Absolutely, we want extra insurance, uh, you know, we all want to be covered and we all want to be protected. So um, as long as the city of Princeton isn't uh, requiring
required to be the insured, I don't think there's going to be an issue. So, well, I and I really appreciate the city of, city of Princeton uh, supporting solar power. I appreciate that. Ellen, this is Jerry Newman. Uh, th thanks for joining us tonight. Um, uh, I'm getting the impression that it's possible that if your system somehow, some way damages the city's grid and we want to be compensated for it, that your insurance company may or may not be willing to compensate us for the damage that was caused. How do we guarantee that we could get made whole for any damage that's caused by your system? Well, I'm sure there would be proof, and how can they deny the proof? You know, I'm definitely going to get plenty of coverage, additional coverage. So whether the city requires it or not, I think it would be uh, not 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 in my interest to to not do that. So no, you don't want to undersell it. I... No, and. So, do you have any idea what a good coverage would be? I think a million. Oh, gosh, no. no. Generous. I, I um, think so, too. And I, and I don't think I'm, I know I have a little bit of experience that a million dollar liability umbrella policy might cost $100 a year. So it's not terribly mm -hmm. expensive. Right. I, I will tell you that right. the, uh, the, the one person that approached me uh, who said that he got a million dollar, or he was able to up his homeowner's liability to a million dollars. Uh, it's going to cost them an extra 88 bucks a year. Yeah, yeah. That's not bad. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I can check with my insurance company and get back with Pete if you'd like for me to. Yeah. yeah. That would be helpful. That would be helpful sure. to know because I, get, I wonder, Alan, also, if the, wherever you're, you uh, acquired your solar system of, of a national organization that might have inroads to other states and what other people are doing in terms of insurance coverage. That they could advise mm -hmm. you wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll talk to them. Mm -hmm. So your your homeowner yeah. company told you that if, if, as long as the city is not listed as an additional insured, they have no problem right. with. Uh, yeah, that was the issue. Money. Is that was the only mm -hmm. issue with them? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Joel, let me ask you this for a second. Let's say that. Uh, uh, Ellen wants to file a claim, and, and the claim states in so many words that her system has did some damage to the municipal municipalities' uh, uh, grid. Is an insurance company going to say, "Okay, fine, no problem, we'll write the check"? Or they're going to well, be, they'll, they'll, they'll investigate it. I mean, you know, just like with any claim, they'll they'll investigate it. If, uh, like she said, if the proof is there, if it if, it, if it's uh, justifiable, yeah, they'll they'll take care of the they'll take care of the claim most likely or not. Yeah. So it's just the other Oh, is there any chance it, that that could be excluded from the coverage? Well, you know, I do know that uh, I, I did check with the insurance company earlier today on this and the language in that policy, and I'm assuming it's the same with most homeowners insurance uh, company, is that uh, the policy states that there's, there is coverage under a standard homeowner policy for solar uh, use and, and so on, and what, what could happen because of using solar power. But it's up to or not exceeding 100, and this gets a little technical, and it's, I, I, I don't clearly understand it myself, but uh, up to but not exceeding 100. So long as the the uh, electricity or the power that's being used does not exceed 125% of the actual electrical power usage by the residents that's insured during the 12 month 12 month period prior to the date of loss. So, in other words, um, when, what I was told by the insurance agent is that this is a, a definitely a moving target, and he doesn't believe that anyone should rely on their homeowner's policy to protect them uh, when you anticipate loss exposure could be, you know, significantly uh, high. Uh, and what he did is he suggested that because um, now I'm not totally familiar with solar power and how that works as far as our grid is concerned, our municipal grid. Um, is there, maybe you can answer this, Ellen, is there, is there, if you build up excess power, excess electricity using solar, what happens? What happens to, you know, the electricity or the power that you don't use? Right. They said it would go back on the grid. Well, that's what, that was what this agent's understanding was. So, if it goes 
goes back on the grid, then how this company looks at it is that it's basically, you can be considered almost like a business because you're putting electricity back on the grid of municipality or a private, uh, or private uh, company. So what they okay. look at, so what they do is they consider, they think that people should look at a business policy specifically for your solar. Okay, here, here's how, what I understand and how it's explained to me. You can have, so they replace the meters, um, some meter, some models, uh, one can go forward and backward in one meter, so it tracks the amount of energy that goes back onto the grid and it keeps track of that, and then you get that um, savings back when, in the wintertime, when you're not producing as much. So it's for the homeowner's benefit only, and it may not cover 100% throughout the year. Right. So we're not making money off of that. Oh, yeah. And it oh, would yeah. behoove us to, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. even if they would buy it back, it's like pennies on the kilowatt. And yeah. it takes like 12 cents to produce the kilowatt, and you'd only get a few cents back. So, you know, there's, that's not the purpose of this. Oh, yeah. And I understand the purpose that. Of, and so did the yeah. insurance. I mean, he understood the big that. Picture. Well. It's not a money venture, but it's the way the system right. is set up, and that money would be, or that power would be going back on the grid. And that's why they, not that you're a money uh, producing business. That's not the point of it. It was just the way the system is set up. And so they prefer uh, residents look at a, uh, a business policy specifically uh, designed for uh, for solar. And the, uh, the uh, premium yeah. on something like that would be very affordable. Um, so yeah, I, in regards to the insurance. So it would be a separate yeah. policy then? It would be. It would be like a, a separate I individual see. business policy specifically for solar. But that's something huh. to discuss with your agent and see what they think on, right. that, on those terms. This is what I okay. got from this company. So something, something to consider. And again, the premium... And what company be, was that? Can you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can. It was, uh, it was State Farm. Okay. All right. So I would, I would just, uh, you know talk to your agent about that and see if that's if, if they have run into that situation as well and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, okay yeah she was they were looking into it and um, yeah and I think regardless I think in the end I think something obviously can be worked out one way or the other but the, the, the thing to look at is to make sure that it's uh, it's done right and that, that you're oh no, absolutely and, obviously, and that we're protected. yeah, yeah. We all we all want it to work correctly and no no problems and uh, there are a number of inspections through the process so sure. you know there's a lot of uh, little safety nets uh, built into the whole process so um, yeah so I will look into the insurance part on my end and get back with Pete probably a little bit later this week depending on how you know. <laughs> availability of my insurance folks so sure no. uh, and Alan, I, yeah. Alan is Jerry again I, I, I'm assuming that mm -hmm. you know your insurance agent if, if he or she is part of a national insurance company maybe she could pursue this question you know out into their corporate entity for assistance to be sure that whatever she gives you is as accurate as it can possibly be because this is so oh, new yeah. for us right Right. Yeah, the company I have is based out of Wisconsin. I'm not sure how much experience they have with that, but okay. the insurance company I deal with are brokers. So mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah. maybe there's another another country that. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So um, yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you so much for uh, allowing the comments and the conversation. Very good conversation. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Good discussion. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming right. on. We appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just a process, for sure. Well, All right. Well, this, thank you uh, very much. Oh, well, hang on. So, as far as this ordinance is uh, concerned, I think we can probably go ahead with, with uh, considering it because, it, it, again, it doesn't address the liability issue. It's just uh, uh, more on, uh, you know, standards on the, on the building, roofs and so on, and what's required there. So, anybody else have any
any comments on that? Or? No, I think we should, you know, and to Pete, if there's any research that I could do for you, uh, I'd be happy to. If you want to just give me some direction over the next day or two, if you want to make some calls or find out something specific, I'd be more than happy to dig into it. Okay, I appreciate that, Jerry. I'll be in touch. Okay. Okay, if there's no uh, further comments, uh, this motion is yes, seconded. So, call roll. Councilmember Swanson? Aye. Mabry? Aye. Gomez? Aye. Newman? Aye. Mayor Quirum? Aye. Next on the agenda is uh, the first reading of Ordinance 0 20 007. This is an ordinance abolishing the Industrial Development Commission. Again, this is first reading. And, Mayor, all council members have reviewed this ordinance and it is submitted for disposition. I make a motion that we advance the Ordinance 0 20 007 to the second reading. Second. Motion has been second. This is a, uh, you know, the Industrial Development Commission was something that was in, you know, that, that we had, the city of Princeton had for uh, many years. Uh, they stopped uh, together several years ago, so uh, they're just, they aren't together anymore, and there's really no reason to have it on our books, and we do need the ordinance to abolish it, so that's what this is all about. So, uh, anybody have any comment on it? I think one thing I'll one thing I'll mention, Mayor, is that uh, I don't want people to get the impression that we're we're ending our economic development activities. Is this that it's cha taking a different form? Exactly. Uh, by by being yeah. involved in other regional efforts and uh, getting direct uh, information from the Illinois Department of Commerce and uh, Economic Opportunity. So the the economic development drive continues. It's just through a different um, th through a different process. Yeah. Good point. Yep. Yep. Any other comments? Uh, okay. Call roll. Councilmember Swanson? Aye. Mabry? Aye. Gomez? Aye. Newman? Aye. Mayor Carroll? Aye. Thank you, Pete. And I'll go to uh, City Manager report. Teresa? Uh, first on my report here, you see the invitation to bid uh, for the electric generation cooling radiator. The city of Princeton is accepting bids for the construction of an air-cooled heat exchanger or a radiator uh, at City Hall until 11 a.m. Wednesday, on, uh, June 17th, 2020. Uh, all contract documents may be examined at City Hall or at the city clerk's office at City Hall. Um, the invitation to bid will also be posted on the city website as well. Any questions on that? Teresa, what is um, this, uh, yeah. what, what's the cost of this thing? I have no idea. Um, I, the total cost, I think this is the one we we're going to try to split it between fiscal years. I think the total cost is going to be over 700000 Wow. Okay. Yeah, I think Jeff so Langer said it'd be about seven, seven seventy-five. Seven. Yeah, if, if we do it right with our budget, um, I tried to work it out with Jeff. If we time it just right, we can split it with this fiscal year and next fiscal year, and it won't hit us quite as hard this, this fiscal okay. year. So that should work out pretty good. That way we don't have to okay. borrow or anything like that. Sure. Perfect. Good deal. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments? Um, I, I want to mention just a couple of things while I have everybody on here. I did get the sales tax numbers uh, for February, uh, which is our quarter percent sales tax and our, our regular sales tax that we bring in. I just want to make sure you guys are aware that these are for February, and we are on track from what we were last year. So February still is fine, which we expected. Um, March, we probably should expect the same as last year because we weren't really getting impacted by COVID at that point in time. So we really won't know the COVID impact on our sales tax numbers for probably another two months, unfortunately. So um, we'll keep an eye on it. Um, we know there's going to be an impact. We're just not quite sure which direction or how big that impact is going to be. But right. unfortunately, right. we won't know for another couple months. Um, 
on that topic of COVID, just so city council and the public is aware, um, everybody is back. Our staff is back full time, uh, reporting to job sites, reporting to the offices, um, following the CDC guidelines. However, City Hall is remaining closed um, and the offices are remaining closed to the public. Uh, we're in the process of considering different parameters that need to be put in place um, before the public can be uh, have access to the buildings, what, what parameters we need to have in place, whether it's plexiglass or whatever safety measures we need to put in place. So we will start to figure out what those are going to be and follow what the governor is going to propose here this week probably and go from there so Teresa do you have a sense if people are staying up to date with their utility bills or are we getting a kind of a high number of people that are suspending payments or having problems with that well from what we're seeing and we get an update whenever there's deposits and stuff made um from talking with the ladies up front as well and seeing the deposits, it seems to be pretty stable. Um, and unless he's hearing otherwise, but when I ask the ladies up front, they seem to think everything is going fairly well. So. Okay. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm totally impressed with our customer base, Jerry. Ever, ever since day yeah. one when we closed, everybody has been super cooperative and very eager to make sure that their bills get paid and uh, they're, they're courteous on the phone. I think we've been uh, very fortunate that our customer base has uh, kind of jumped in and done their part to make sure that things keep moving along. Fabulous. Yeah. That's fabulous. And I think, too, that they know that should, you know, hard times come upon them, that we're here to help them if necessary. Right. Okay. Thanks, Teresa. You're welcome. Anything else, Teresa? Um, no. The only thing I'll have to add at some point, and I don't know if we'll have to have a, a special meeting for this, but for the applications for the grant uh, to be submitted, there will have to be a resolution by the council, but it can't be dated the same day or prior to the council meeting. So we'll, we'll discuss how we're going to handle that, but I'll need to get that taken care of before I can get all the applications submitted. Okay. Sounds good. Um, under, uh, thank you, Teresa, for the report. So under mayor report, we just have a couple of uh, board appointments. I move that we uh, appoint Rodney Lang and Jackie Davis to the Plan Commission Board of Zoning Appeals, both for three-year terms ending April 30th, 2023. Second. Motion for second. Comments? Call roll. Council Member Swanson? Aye. Avery? Aye. Gomez? Aye. Newman? Aye. Mayor Quiro? Aye. Okay, we'll go to uh, any old business tonight. Any new business tonight? Uh, Mayor, I would. This is uh, Council Member Mabry, if I could just have a minute, please. Sure. The, I just want to uh, compliment the street department. They started working with the uh, quarter of a cent bill tax money that we've been collecting. And the street department, if you get a chance to drive down there and look, they started at the corner of South Pleasant and Park Avenue West, and they're replacing curbs, and it's looking good. So in the process of replacing curbs, they're also replacing these aprons that are going up into people's driveways, and they're also replacing some sidewalks. and. So it's kind of like a, it's a, a joint effort for all the things that they're replacing. And then, of course, I understand next year we'll come in with a, a new uh, asphalt surface. But I just want to commend the street department on the nice work they're doing on that project. And then I also wanted to take a moment and commend the uh, cemetery department. Our two cemeteries are, are looking sharp. I know Memorial Day is coming up this uh, coming weekend. But those cemeteries have come a long way the past couple of years. So, again, I want to say a shout-out to both of those uh, entities. Do a nice job. Yeah, thanks, Ray. You're, you're right. I agree. Thank you. Yeah. I think the, uh, I think the, uh, I think uh, that's going to be scheduled for this year. I think they're going to get those curbs done. I think that's going to be done later this year. Um, that section as well. As, yeah, as well as uh, Pleasant Street from uh, Crew all the way down the courthouse. Well, badly needed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it's just great that it's being done as a, as a unit.
unit, a combined effort, and it really looks good because the stuff they're pulling out is 80 or 100 years old, so the things that they're putting back hopefully will last another 100 years. So it's, yeah. it's just a legacy project, a good project. Yeah, I totally agree. Thanks for bringing that up. Uh, any other new business? We have anybody with public comment? Anybody from the public like to speak at this point? Okay, well, uh, entertain a motion to adjourn and reconvene. Okay, I move that we adjourn our regular meeting this evening and reconvene for our next regular council meeting on Monday, June 1st, 2020 at 7 o'clock at City Hall or remotely. Change the meeting format and location other than attended at City Hall will be announced in advance. Second. Motion has been second. Call roll. Council Member Swanson? Aye. Mabry? Aye. Gomez? Aye. Newman? Aye. Mayor Quirum? Aye. This meeting is adjourned, and uh, thank you all out the public for attending. So thanks a lot, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Good night. Have a good night.